Hey you guys, Erin here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back to the channel. So today we have three brand new budget friendly beginner vegan meals for you guys. They have been on repeat around the household here lately. For breakfast we've got a strawberry banana breakfast bar that is out of this world insanely sweet and delicious without the added unrefined sugars so it's sweetened with date paste and it makes them so, so good. For lunch, we have a vegetable pad thai with tofu, and you guys had said, yes, you want to hear some of our other favorite ways to prepare tofu, so we have an awesome tofu hack that you will not want to miss out on. And for dinner, we are making a shepherd's pot pie. This is something I have had bookmarked in the back of my mind for weeks. This one is so good. I was like, Dusty, next year, we need to just make this for Thanksgiving and call it good because it has everything in it all the good winter vegetables and it is so so nourishing and great for this time of year these meals are budget friendly and beginner friendly because they don't contain any obscure random ingredients or spices or fancy tools or equipment in fact most of the staple ingredients you probably already have on hand and if not you can find them at virtually any grocery store if you guys want these recipes and more like it be sure to check out our meal planner and recipe app linked below you guys have heard us say it before nobody can argue with eating more fruits and more vegetables so a lot of times as a beginner you just need a quick fix or some type of inspiration right at your fingertips. That is why we absolutely love Daily Harvest. Whether you're in a pinch, in a hurry, or just need a super simple, quick, and nourishing meal, or you just need some new recipe inspiration and you need an easy way to eat more fruits and veggies, Daily Harvest is there for you. Dusty and I first tried Daily Harvest years ago before we even had the kids. We love that they're built on organic ingredients and that all of the key ingredients are listed right on the packaging for you to easily see. Every single ingredient is plant-based, straightforward, and super good for you. I love that they use ingredients that I can't always find in the grocery store. So for example, something like acerola cherries or passion fruit. We enjoy their harvest bowls when we're busy working throughout the day and we need a quick lunch that's also nourishing and enjoyable. A lot of times we'll just pop a flatbread in the oven to snack on while we're cooking dinner. If you guys are interested and you want to try daily harvest for yourself and your family use eat move rest 40 and check out the link below in the description to get up to $40 off your first box so here is everything that we're gonna be needing for our strawberry banana bars they're gonna be so so good this is perfect for breakfast or for a snack the kids literally devour these and they can be picky sometimes at breakfast but they never turn these down so this is a winner if you have kids for our strawberry banana breakfast bar we need two cups of oat flour, 15 to 16 pitted medjool dates. We're gonna blend those into a date paste. You'll need some ground flax seed, four tablespoons of almond butter. You could also use tahini, cashew butter, peanut butter. We like raw almond butter for this recipe. A half teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt, two teaspoons of vanilla, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, one teaspoon of baking powder, and three banana bread ripe bananas. We're gonna mash those. Oh, and strawberries, the star of the show. You'll probably want about, about six to eight strawberries chopped really finely. The first thing you'll wanna do is pit about 15 to 16 medjool dates and soak them in filtered water. If they're more firm and dry, they're gonna need to soak longer and you might wanna soak them in hot or warm water. This way you don't need to use any refined sugar sweeteners. You can use just dates. It's a whole plant food filled with fiber. This is much better for blood sugar. No cavities for kiddos. Mm, I love dates. I eat probably like six or eight dates a day. Next up, I'm going to blend our rolled oats into oat flour. So two cups into the Vitamix. Ooh. We've got our oat flour in our large mixing bowl. Now I'm gonna blend two tablespoons of whole flax seed. This is going to be our egg replacement. Once it hits liquid, it gets very viscous. And it's filled with omega-3 fatty acids. In fact, one tablespoon gives you everything you need for the day. We've got one teaspoon of cinnamon going in, about a half teaspoon of ground pink Himalayan salt going in, one teaspoon baking powder, and that will be it for our dry ingredients. 
So now I'm just gonna stir to combine these really well. Now we're gonna take our soaked pitted dates and blend them into a date paste. We're gonna discard just a little bit of the water. Starting with the date paste, then we're gonna mash our bananas, get some vanilla up in there, some apple cider vinegar, and our nut butter or seed butter, whichever you choose. If you have a nut allergy, go with something like tahini, which comes from sesame seeds. So I just kind of eyeball it. We're gonna do four tablespoons. Also, I should mention, I love almond butter because it's a great source of vitamin E. Okay, I lied. The other thing that I just eyeball is vanilla. We're just gonna do about one to two teaspoons. And since I'm living on the edge, we're gonna eyeball the apple cider vinegar. One teaspoon, just a splash. It's okay if it's not perfectly smooth. It's really good once it's baked. Just trust the process. Even if it's a little lumpy bumpy, it's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna put our wet ingredients into the dry bowl. Mix well. The last step is to chop our strawberries and mix them in, and then we're gonna pop it in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 35 to 45 minutes. If you cannot find good fresh strawberries, I have used thawed frozen strawberries for this and it works just the same. Another secret, zero waste secret, you can actually blend strawberry tops into your smoothies. They're super loaded with nutrition. So this is one you will want to use parchment paper for for best results, just so it doesn't stick. Since this is an oil-free recipe, and bake for anywhere from about 35 to 40 minutes until you can poke a toothpick in and it comes out clean. On to our lunch recipe. So we are going to be making pad thai tofu. This recipe is really simple and straightforward, but it comes in four parts. We're gonna boil our noodles. We're gonna bake our tofu cubes. We're gonna saute all of our veggies and we're gonna mix our sauce. And then at the end, we're gonna mix everything together and it's going to be noodlicious. You guys are gonna love this recipe. We are using buckwheat soba noodles, but we love buckwheat because it's a complete protein. This is also going to be higher in fiber. Our tofu, so the hack that we've used today to make it a more firm and chewy, meaty-like consistency is we took it out of its packaging and froze it on this plate overnight and then took it out this morning to let it thaw. So when we go to bake it, it's going to be a lot more meaty and thick and have a better texture. When you break it open, it looks like a McDonald's chicken nugget. So if you want a more meaty consistency, yeah, try freezing your tofu. Our other ingredients we're going to need are half of a red onion diced, three to four garlic cloves minced, shredded carrots, we're gonna use two carrots, half of a red bell pepper. If you want more of any of these veggies, feel free to add more two green onions, a handful of cilantro for garnish. Pad Thai also usually uses peanuts, but we're using cashews for garnish. We're also gonna chop some spinach to add in at the last minute just for added nutrition. For the sauce, what you're going to need is crushed red chili pepper. You can leave this out if you don't want any heat. We're also going to need a third cup of creamy peanut butter, one cup of water, I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of Nama Shoyu, which is our soy sauce alternative. This is an organic and unpasteurized soy sauce, and it's also gluten-free. I believe soy sauce usually contains wheat. And one tablespoon of coconut aminos for added sweetness, and our limes. We're gonna use probably about one and a half limes. You'll want about three tablespoons of lime juice. You can always adjust any of these flavors. If it needs more tanginess, add more lime. But if you're still needing more sweetness, rather than using a whole bunch of sugar, you can always add maybe like a tablespoon of maple syrup. Again, this is all to taste. We're going for Pad Thai inspired, not authentic because we don't do things like fish sauce and oil and all the refined sugar. All right, you guys, for dinner, we are making our very first shepherd's pot pie. It's gonna be loaded with veggies, added protein and iron thanks to lentils and nutritional yeast, and it's gonna be so soothing and warming for this time of year. So what you're going to need is one cup of green lentils, one head of broccoli, three large carrots, one yellow onion, three to four garlic cloves, about eight medium or like we have 16 small potatoes, a handful of sliced mushrooms, one cup of corn, one cup of peas, quarter cup of nutritional yeast, two cups of vegetable broth, 
one to two cups of plain organic plant milk, salt and pepper to taste, and about two tablespoons of arrowroot powder. This will help thicken it up. We're going to cook our one cup of lentils in our two cups of vegetable broth and set that aside. We're going to boil our potatoes, and when they're boiled, drain off the water, and then we're going to mash them with salt and pepper, maybe nutritional yeast for a little bit more savory flavor. And then we're going to, meanwhile, be sauteing our onion and garlic and carrots. And when they're cooked, we'll add in our broccoli, mushrooms, peas and corn, until everything is cooked through. And finally, we'll add in our one to two cups of soy milk as well as our arrowroot powder until it is nice and thick and creamy. We're going to pour it into the base of a baking dish. We're going to be preheating our oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna pop our pot pie into the oven for about 20 minutes at this temperature. Then we're gonna switch it to broil and leave it in for another five minutes and then take it out. And it should be a little bit golden brown on the top. Take it out so it can cool before you serve and enjoy. If you guys are into videos like this, give this video a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the Eat, Move, Rest fam. Click that bell to turn on notifications. Be sure to leave us some love in the comments below and let us know which of these three recipes you are most excited to try first. We'll be back next week with more epic, delicious content. Let us know in the comments what you'd like to see moving forward. And be sure to use our discount code and check out Daily Harvest linked in the description below. Until next time, eat, move, rest, your best. Bye guys! There are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.